The focus of my comments today are to think about the green technology industry and in particular, what are the drivers for the boom we have seen investing in green technology. I'll also take some time at the end to talk about some new research that I'm pursuing looking at these drivers and in particular looking at the role that public policy and private strategies play in driving entrepreneurship and innovation in green technology. Anecdotally, there has been massive growth in interest in green technology over the past two years. Renewable energy sector, for example, solar, wind, biofuels, have seen substantial increases in investment over the past two years. We've seen in the auto industry increased interest in alternative uh, engine technologies, such as hybrid, electric, and uh, hydrogen fuel cell technologies. In sectors as diverse as retail, chemicals, information technology, we're seeing a lot of ferment around the potential for green technologies to basically transform different industries and different markets. So an obvious question is, what is driving these? While clearly the current recession has dampened some of the enthusiasm for green technology, it continues to be a broad class that grows. In 2008, while the rest of the venture capital market shrunk by about 8%, we saw that the green tech space grew by about 50%. In total, there were 277 deals completed for about $4 billion worth of investment. This represented about 15% of the total venture capital invested in 2008. Not surprisingly, in Q4 and Q1 of 2009, we've seen a substantial drop-off in all venture capital investment, including green technology. But in quarter two of 2009, we've seen an actual rebound, about a 73% increase in green technology investment in the last quarter. Just today, Koshla Ventures announced the uh, introduction of a new $1.1 billion fund for investing in green technologies. So what in part is fueling this interest? One could imagine a number of economic drivers for green technology. First, and perhaps most obvious, be consumer preferences. Consumers might be willing to pay a premium for green technology. We see in the auto sector, for example, that hybrid vehicles sell for a premium of a few thousand dollars over their non-hybrid equivalents. In the U.S. Uh, electric uh, utility market, we now have many electric utilities providing an opportunity for consumers to pay a premium for buying green power, renewable power and energy. In any number of different sectors, businesses are adopting green technologies as a way to burnish their brands, improve their standing with consumers, and ultimately increase demand for their products and services. These can help not only with consumers, but also help perhaps inoculate the firm or make them less likely to be a target of environmental activist actions, which can also be damaging to the brand and the reputation of the firm. Now, historically, consumer preferences for green goods has waxed and waned as public sentiment and interest in environmental issues have shifted uh, over time. Uh, it's an interesting and curious question of whether or not in the current economic recession, whether demand for green products and technologies will persist. Uh, while I don't think we have definitively the answer to that right now, I think we do can say at least anecdotally that in this latest upswing of interest, the pr demand and interest has been more sustained and of greater uh, depth than we have seen in other previous upticks. I think looking forward, I think it's safe to say as the economy turns around that we'll probably see an uptick once again in interest amongst consumers for paying premiums for green goods and services. A second driver I'd like to discuss today is operational efficiency. Businesses and individuals might be pursuing and purchasing green technologies simply as a way to improve efficiency. The most obvious example would be lowering energy costs. When it comes to, for example, installing energy-efficient lighting or uh, adopting uh, efficient uh, heating and air conditioning units, these are just but two examples of ways in which firms are looking to adopt green technologies to lower their cost structure. Now, when it comes to things such as renewable energy, such as solar, wind, biofuels, and the like, clearly part of the economic viability of these technologies is really dependent on the prices of traditional fuel sources, fossil fuel sources, such as oil and coal. Oil, in particular, as I'm sure many of you are aware, has been quite volatile in the last year. About a year ago, oil prices on the global markets peaked at around $150, billion, $150 per barrel. Uh, it then bottomed out a few months later at about $30 per barrel and now has uh, ri uh, risen to about $70 per barrel of oil. Clearly, this volatility affects, once again, the viability of these alternative energy sources such as solar and wind. 
Uh, I think it's safe to say that this volatility um, increases the risk associated with investment in green technologies and as a consequence raises the thresholds or raises the uh, expected values needed to be generated out of these technologies to make them worthwhile investments. The third area I'd like to talk about is government subsidies. Government subsidies in a number of industries, especially renewable energy, have been a big driver historically for uh, these green tech investments. Uh, these investments, or excuse me, these subsidies may take any number of forms, uh, tax subsidies, subsidies for R&D, for renewable energy and the like. The government can also subsidize green technologies through their procurement function. Uh, a very large purchaser, they can require that products and services have some type of uh, green tech technology or green bent to them, and this can also drive uh, some of the demand for green products and some of the drivers for incentives for green products. In terms of these incentives, it clearly seems in some cases, in particular wind uh, and solar, that without these subsidies, some of these industries might not seem viable. And clearly, some of these industries seem to hang on whether Congress reapproves uh, reapproves subsidies in these areas or not. The subsidies at the end of the day are really interacting with these other types of incentives, once again, the price of uh, oil or coal or other alternatives, and determining the viability of these different technologies economically. Um, just recently, there was a nice article talking about how, for example, subsidies at a state level for solar energy have been decreasing, been pulled back in by a number of states, yet simultaneously we've seen an increase in supply in uh, solar technology that have driven prices down in solar. So once again, it's a more complicated story than just simply saying government subsidies exist and that's what drives the market or not. One could imagine with the current federal stimulus monies, many of which have not formally been released for green technologies and the like, that we're going to see in the short run an increase in these drivers for green technologies. Uh, just but one example, the recent Cash for Clunkers program in the U.S., while not particularly de uh, dedicated towards hybrid and alternative vehicle engines, clearly helped increase demand for those vehicles. The fourth area I'd like to talk about related to government subsidies is government regulation. Government might directly, in many ways, force green technologies or drive green technologies to be viable. Uh, in the U.S. auto industry, we have rising cafe standards, which are going to require and drive auto companies to increase the fuel efficiency of their vehicles, leading to perhaps alternative technologies like hybrid and electric. In the electric utility sector, we see um, the potential for, and actually more broadly, the potential for a cap-and-trade system in global greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the U.S. This could be actually a very, very substantial, significant driver of green technologies in the U.S. Um, estimates suggest that if we have, for example, a $30 per ton of CO2 equivalent permitting fee, that this will really change the dynamics of this industry quite drastically. Now, while it's not clear whether we will see a cap-and-trade system or even a tax subsidy or tax increase on uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S., I think the odds are significant enough that for any investors, for example, they need to be factoring in uh, their expectations of, su of such legislation in their estimates of the viability of different green technologies. Finally, I'd like to talk about strategic positioning. Uh, for the past 10 years, I've been teaching and studying strategy. And one of the things we know is that when we have a technology disruption within an industry, that this often leads to a disruption in the competitive order as well. New technologies like we're seeing emerging in a number of green uh, domains often lead to niche opportunities. These niche opportunities open the door for entrepreneurs other smaller firms to move in to what might be uh, competitive markets uh, dominated by larger players. Uh, innovation might lead some of these players to grow and flourish, and in many cases they might supplant many of the existing dominant players within a given, within a given industry segment. It's not always clear that the firms who are currently the dominant players within industry are going to be the ones who are going to survive and thrive as the technology shifts. Take the, uh, the petroleum industry, for example. It's not clear whether a BP or an Exxon are going to be the ones best positioned to benefit as uh, technology switches to, for example, wind or solar. While clearly they're going to be profitable firms for the foreseeable future, once again, it's not clear that they're going to be the market leaders in these new technologies. Similarly, if we look at the auto industry, I believe, and perhaps this isn't 
so radical a production of a projection given the state of the US auto market but that we'll probably see an emergent auto company within the next 10 15 years that you and I don't even know the name of at this point the you know the invariable two guys in a garage are going to come up with something new uh, that might revolutionize the industry once again we've seen an in industry after industry before that when we have a change in the core technology that it often leads to entrepreneurial entry and a competitive disruption within those industries so I think it's this last driver that, in part, is really motivating a lot of the activity that we see uh, in the green technology space, especially from uh, the more entrepreneurial sides of uh, the investment.